Hello, my name is Dan Colgan, and welcome to day 12 of my December Christmas Carol Countdown. Today's carol is In the Bleak Midwinter. The text of this was originally written as a poem titled A Christmas Carol by Christina Rossetti around the year 1872. Christina Rossetti is a fairly well-known poet. She was born in London and had a mental breakdown at age 14, suffering from depression and illness throughout her life, even contracting Graves' disease later in life as well. However, even with those challenges, she managed to volunteer at a women's home. She managed to fight for a number of causes, including war opposition, slavery, exploitation of people, and cruelty to animals as well. She was deeply religious and even rejected two marriage proposals simply because the fellows who proposed to her did not measure up to her strict religious standards. At any rate, she had a wide circle of friends and was, very, and was thought very highly of. The Anglican Church has a feast day for her on April 27th. There was a fairly significant resurgence of her works in popular culture, especially here in the United States in the 1970s when an interest in feminism arose. The tune of this was composed by Gustav Holtz in 1906 and appeared as a hymn that same year. Holtz, who you may recognize primarily as an orchestral composer from his work The Planets, he named this tune Cranham after the place of his birth. Carols like this can be quite effective. They can also garner a few critics. Here's the, the first verse. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Now, critics of this would claim that this is really nothing except a first century weather report and probably an inaccurate one at that. A number of curls do this. Personally, I've kind of always been annoyed singing about the snow lying on the ground, when in reality it may have very little to do with Christmas and there may have not been any snow whatsoever. However, I've learned that some people love these and I think they can serve a purpose. Perhaps they can prime our emotional palate for what the rest of this carol has to offer. Sure, there are carols like, Joy to the world, the Lord has come, which gets straight to the point without mincing any words as to what it's about. But perhaps carols like this one today offer us a moment of intimacy and a moment for a different experience that we wouldn't have without that mood being set. I will play this through with Holtz's melody. I will also include after that a recording of the Capital City Chorus, my community choir, singing this text to a different tune, a new one set by Nathan Jones for choir, piano, and oboe. And I apologize, there's, that's just an audio recording, so you will notice the picture will go black during that.